So that was the idea. So I came back to China and say I want to resign from my school. You were a teacher. I was a teacher. I've been teaching in the university for six years. So I said uh, I want to do it. I invite 24 of my friends to my apartment. After two hours of explaining what I'm going to do, internet, and 23 of them say, "Forget it." <laughs> he said, "This thing never worked because there's no such thing called internet in the world. You know nothing about a computer. So why you want to do this?" And um, only one people. He said, "Jack, if you want to try it." Just to try it, but if there's something wrong, just come back. And uh, after a whole night thinking, I say I still want to do it because most of the people they have a fancy ideas in the evening, but in the day when they wake up in the evening or in the morning, they go back to do the same job. We have to do something different. So from there, the problem is that we have to find a solution that how we can be a company can live and long and healthy as long as like a Mercedes-Benz and a Siemens. If an industry cannot live more than three years, if all the companies cannot live happily for three years, this industry is never become the mainstream. This industry can never become the D economy. So what we want to do. Is that how we can find this solution? The world is changing so fast. Most people don't realize what is IT, what is internet. We are moving very, very fast to data technology. IT technology and data technology. It's not the technology difference. It's the difference of people, the way people think, the way people deal with the world. We don't know what the world will look like in 30 years. And we don't know what the data will look like, but we are sure that the whole world in next 30 years will be changed. If the first and the second innovation and technology revolution relieve or liberate the human strength, the physical strength, this revolution relieves and liberates the strength of a human brain, the brain, the innovation, the future world. We believe will be connected, not by oil, not by other things, but by data. The future world, the business is C to B, not B to C. C to B is consumer to business, not business to consumer. Because you have a lot of data, because of the data, the manufacturer must do customized things. Otherwise, manufacture will be very difficult. In the future. All the manufacturers they make the machines. The machines can not only produce the products. The machines must talk. The machine must think. And the machine is not going to be supported by oil, by electricity. The machine is going to be supported by data. The future world business will not focusing on the size. Business will not focus on standardization and the power. They will focus like. Focused on the flexibility, nimbleness, customization, and user friendliness, and also I strongly believe the future world. We are going to have a lot of women leaders because in the future, people not only focus on the muscles, powers, they focus on wisdom, they focus on careness and responsibility. And I think internet must find the missing part. This missing part is how the clicks and the motors can work it together, and how we can making sure in the next 30 years the internet and the clicks and motors can work together. Only work clicks and motors can work together. Internet companies can survive, can live happily for next 30 years. And if that day comes. That day we called the economy, and it's got, it's not a digital economy, which I called data economy. Everything is going to be changed, and I also believe the world is going to be beautiful, but the world is very challenging. Apple may not be the future, but Apple tells us what the future will look like. That is something in the machine is moving. That is data. 
we are at a great time of innovation, inspiration, invention, and creativity. And I think everybody is working hard, trying to realize their dreams. Today, you see here a real, real, real world workers, a truck drivers, and a game players, and also all these senior people. Everybody in the ocean, aided ocean at times. Asian times, nobody can leverage the technology to realize their dreams. Today, because of the data, everything becomes the truth. And I strongly believe it's not the technology that changed the world. It's the dreams behind the technology that changed the world. If the technology changed the world, I would never be here. I'm not trained to be a te- I'm not trained to be a technology. I know nothing about a computer, and I know very little about the internet. I have a strong dream that we want to help small business. So, 14 years ago, we came here to sell Chinese products to Europe. That won't work. 14 years later, we tried to help the European small business to China, to the world by using the internet. It's the dreams that drive the world. It's not only the technology. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> let's work hard. It's a fantastic world. It's a world belongs to young people. It's a world belongs to the future. And thank you very, very much for listening. Thank you.